look. Christine, can you hear me now? <laughs> Love it. We're going to have to cut off the first half of this conversation. <laughs> Ah, oh, tech. I love tech. All right. Let me know if you can hear me now. <laughs> and uh, it looks like we're on. All right. So today is all around the fuzzy feelings that we can actually amplify and the funds that we can amplify in the follow up. Thanks, Christine. It's nice to hear you too. All right. Um, now, the thing is, we get to this stage with clients and uh, we have this amazing connection with them. We sit in there, we hear their, hear their story, we hear their heartfelt, where they've been and where they, where they want to get to. And then we go to rebook them. At that time, they might not have their calendar, they might not have their, you know, someone's schedule and they intend to rebook, right? Two or three months pass and I'm sure you've been in the same position before. You go, ah, oh, I really wanted to go and do that other flotation tank. I really wanted to go and do that massage thing again. Oh, I really wanted to go to that class again. But two to three months later and you're like, ah, oh, I don't know if they want me back. I don't know. Maybe it's been too long. Maybe my thing's not the same. Maybe da, 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 da. right. We make up our own stories in the same situation. But when we are the practitioner on the receiving end, all of a sudden this whole other thing comes, comes to it, right? This whole, oh, it's been two to three months. It must have been my, you know, what I did for that person. It must have been this or it must have been that. In actual fact, life just happens. Life happens to all of us. And often it is that two or three month stage that we, we come back around and think about it. Now, this comes back to something that I, I talk about a lot with the Clubsters, about closing loops. And this past month, I have been it's been so highlighted in my personal life about closing loops. Now, we wander around and we open loops all the time. We have conversations where we start a conversation and to have a full circle to close, somebody usually talks back and then we close the loop. Now, uh, I was experiencing it this week just with cleaning the kitchen, for instance, right? We have our dinner, we have our meal, we get ready to go to bed and... We just leave the dishes there, right? So it's an open loop. It's not quite closed until we actually go and do the dishes, put the things away, and then it's a closed loop. Again, we have these in conversations with people. We say, yes, I'll get back to you on such and such. And then a couple of weeks pass and life happens and we don't quite get there. Or whatever it happens to be for you. But there, there is all of these open loops. And when we have open loops, we're sending energy out to somewhere that unless we close it, it can't quite keep that full circle of energy going. So the thing with the follow-ups is if we have an open loop, and Seth Godin talks about it in his new book um, on marketing, we have tension that builds up. And as human beings, we don't like tension right? We're used to having it around, but as soon as the tension's relieved, that's the feeling we want to feel. And so when we've got an open loop with somebody, ah, oh, I really think we, we should get, you know, I've thought about that person. I've thought about their consult. I've thought about their follow-up and what they could need. And we don't go and call them or we don't go and send them that email. It's an open loop and that tension's still open. They're not relieved of it and we're not relieved of it. We've made up a story about that tension. They've made up a story about that tension. And the only way that we can get through it is stop jumping into other people's heads <laughs> because we can't possibly know what they've been thinking or what their life happens looks like. And if your hashtag life happens looks like busyness or some other thing, they can't possibly know that for you either until you close the loop. So what does closing the loop actually look like when it comes to follow-ups? It looks like a conversation. It looks like, so for some of us, a conversation is the quickest. And sometimes it's like, oh, but I feel like this. Oh, but I feel like this. Oh, but they think such and such about me. And you're not in their head. You can't possibly know what they think about you, right? Ah, oh, this, that, and the other. And then you just have a conversation with them without wondering, uh, without getting attached to where that conversation is going to go. Oh, they have to book in with me or they don't without getting attached to it, if you just have that conversation, you have an opportunity for that loop to be closed and that tension to be resolved. So, um, uh, Chris, uh, sorry, Elle says, I can so relate. And I'm sure there's so many of you that can. I can personally as well. And that's why I thought I'd have the conversation. Christine, we, can't, uh, we do, 
sorry, we can't know what anyone else is thinking. Doing the work, absolutely. We can't possibly be inside somebody else's head, let alone know the three or four different conversations that are going on in their heads, let alone worry about our own. So having a conversation is is the place to start. If it's if uh, like me, way back at the beginning of um, my clinical practice, you were freak you're freaking out about talking to somebody on the phone that you're peer salesy or you're peer this. It's purely from caring that that person said that they wanted to follow up with you, and they and life happens. Whatever life happens looks like, you can't possibly guesstimate what that looks like for them as they can't possibly guesstimate what it looks like for you. So it's time to have the conversation. What does that conversation look like? Hey, we had this amazing conversation last time we met. I, I heard you and I heard that this is what you want your future to look like. I'm just following up. I'm just cl closing the loop. I'm just coming back around to check that you're still on track for that thing that you said you wanted. It's as simple as that. Now, by doing that, you're not just like, that's not being salesy, that's duty of care really. As a, as a good practitioner, you are checking up on them to see that they chose you to, to begin with, they chose you to follow up with them, they chose you as their, um, their partner in their health journey and you're being a good partner in their health journey. It's also creating a level of trust that you wouldn't have usually. And it's also creating nice fuzzy feelings that they feel like they are actually special. Um, I know whenever I've had a conversation with somebody or somebody's reached out personally to me, and I do it all the time. Some of you guys might have heard from me in personal messages and things like that. It's not from any other reason but to feel like this is a conversation that needs to be had and let's have the conversation now and wherever it goes, it goes and wherever it doesn't go, it doesn't go. It's cool, but I have the time now to have this quick conversation with you. And the same thing, you get those yummy fuzzy feelings, right? There's a fuzzy feeling of connection. There's a fuzzy feeling of trust. And interestingly, if you are putting that out, the rule of reciprocity kicks in. Now, it's not like you expect that to happen. It just does. My perception on it, of it is it's a universal law. So when that happens and somebody actually does want to come and see you, you get an opening. They get an opening to actually come and see you. And they go, oh, actually, I did feel like that. I did feel that to, you know, it was two months ago and I haven't come back around to it. Oh, life did happen. And instead of the story rolling around in your head and the story rolling around in their head, you can actually connect and give them an opportunity to come back and see you, to come back online for their health health conditions, to come back online on what they actually wanted in their life. All right. So firstly, follow-ups, following up on a phone conversation, following up on an email, following up gives a level of trust, gives a level of fuzzy feelings. So you get that yummy connection. It also stops any of that negative self-talk that we perpetuate. And I know this self-talk happens, not only from a personal experience, but I see it in all of our Facebook groups as naturopaths and practitioners. This negative self-talk can only happen when we're making stuff up in our heads, when we don't have the actual data, we don't have the actual um, script of what's going on in somebody else's head because we can't possibly be in their head. We've got so much going on in our own. So it stops the negative self-talk. And the flow on effect is the funds follow through. Now, first, is, first and foremost, it's the fuzzy feelings. If you go in with the intention that you just want to make more money out of it, then you are going to come off as salesy and spammy and weird. But if you're coming from a place of duty of care, like, hey, we started on this partnership together. Let's just follow up. It's literally even a one-liner for some uh, emails. Hey, we started on this journey together. Do you still have the same goals for 2019? If you do, here's the booking system. I'd love to see you right at the beginning so that we can start it off as good, as optimal as we can. I'd love to be able to help you on your health journey. These things are super, super simple once you've written out the one sentence. But there's so much stuff going on in our heads about it. And then the follow-up is where the funds are at. If you've got a new program for the start of 2019, if you've got a new um, offering that you have, you've got the chance to then be able to tell that person about it. If you don't follow up, there is no fuzzy feelings and there is no funds available to you. You are literally leaving that connection and that money on the table. All right, 
So, um, hey, Karen, nice to see you. Hey, Carla, nice to see you too. Um, Karen says, hence friendly reminders. I love this. Yeah, right. Now, I had the experience last week of having our kitchen sink completely blocked. And uh, <laughs> my beautiful husband um, went to Bunnings. He loves a trip to Bunnings, multiple trips to Bunnings on one day often. And then we end up conceding and calling an expert. So uh, after many trips to Bunnings and many plunges and many, some weird snaky thing, we conceded and we uh, made phone calls to five, five plumbers, right? Uh, first one left a message. Second one uh, left a message, then text messaged, and then he text messaged back the number of another guy. So we called him, right? Uh, and then we Googled two in our area and one of them answered, out of the five, one answered, and he said, we'll see you tomorrow. Um, today's not a good day because we we did this over about three days. And on the Sunday, we finally just went, no, this is we're not taking a no as an answer. This is ridiculous. Four, we'd gone through four and none of them had called back. None of them had called back. They are literally leaving funds on the table. And I'll tell you about that in a sec, right? So the final one, uh, says, yep, be there tomorrow at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock runs around. You know, my kids are at um, their um, swimming carnival that I'm missing out on because I'm sitting there waiting for the plumber, right? And then uh, 12 o'clock rolls around and he's still not there. So we ring up the plumbing company. Oh, we can't find you in the details. We can't find this and we can't find that. We can't find that. But we can send somebody around at 1 o'clock, right? So around comes the guy at one o'clock and he says, oh, it's strange you weren't in our system, blah, blah, blah. He was amazing when we got there. And he told us all about his business back in um, Scotland and some other things that he was interested in. When he got there, he fixed the problem, fixed the problem, and then said, look, I can fix you this problem and it'll be cheaper if you go on a plan. All the plan is, is it's um, $250 every year. We come around and we check your plumbing, we check your electricity, we check this, we check that. You get a free tap every year, you get this other thing. And because he was there, he fixed our problem. He said, look, you know, you probably don't need all of those things, but if it does come up, it actually brings the cost down by 50%. So every time you do this, it's never ever going to cost you the amount that it cost you this time. Okay, cool. And over five years, I've seen it. Lots of people have saved, saved money. So not only did he follow up, he then had a chance to offer an upsell to me and uh, my hubby. And then he, he was able to go and change taps and do these other things that we never would have signed up for, right? In the end, we spent $800 getting all of our taps cleared. Now we've lived in our house for nearly five years now and uh, we haven't had anything done to electricity, air conditioning, plumbing or anything like that. So it's kind of like maintenance for our house, right? Like a health maintenance that we have for our, our human body. But we spent $800 with him. Those four people just missed out on $800 by literally not following up. They also missed out on the fuzzy feelings. We left a wonderful Google review for this plumber. Um, I'll absolutely tell other people about him. But it was all just purely from the fact that he followed up. And then while he was in the consultation with us, was following up and following up and following up. So not only did we get to have the fuzzy feeling of connection with that plumber, he also got so much more funds from following up. Now the same thing can happen with you guys. And again, we can make up stories. You know, one of the guys ended up texting and saying that it was his kid's first birthday on Sunday. Can we text this other guy? That's cool. But then follow up the next day, right? It, it Follow up. Now, again, I am definitely not this 100% of the time, but I am absolutely committed to leaning in to where this happens to me all the time and I wanted to bring it atten the attention to you guys about it because we are literally leaving all of this wonderful connection and all of this wonderful money on the table by not following up. So the actionable step today is 
Can you set up a friendly reminder like Karen's mentioned? Do you have, say, Health Kit, Simple Clinic, um, uh, MailChimp, any of those, where you can send out a friendly reminder for those people that have had their first visit this year and haven't ended up coming back? Don't d stop yourself in this moment because I can hear all your little cogs turning. You're going, but they didn't come back because they didn't like me. They didn't come back because my treatment protocol mustn't have worked. They didn't come back. Life happens. Hashtag life happens. And you've done it yourself this year. You've started something and haven't followed through with it. The same thing with them. But this is a beautiful opportunity to get those fuzzy feelings and send out an invitation or a friendly reminder that you're here for them that you're here in 2019 for them and that you'd love to follow up with them to see if you can still be of assistance to them. Now, same thing happens, you know, with everything that we have to keep on top of. Not only our human systems, but our health, our business, our mindset, all of those things. We need those friendly reminders to go, yep, that's got to be at the top of my mind. And then have something that you can upsell to. That was one of my biggest lessons this week with the, the plumbing. Have something where the funds can be amplified. Yes, I know there's strategy around it, but we are in business for a reason, right? And in the long run, I'm actually saving money by getting everything looked at every year. Same thing with you guys. What could you offer? Could you offer a new program for 2019? Could you offer three visits for 2019 to make sure that they are at their optimum and they book them in straight away so that they don't miss them like they have this past year? Where can you follow up? Where can you send a friendly reminder? Send out the um, autoresponder. How can you make three calls? for following up that you haven't followed up? And where can you close open loops so that you can have a nice, nice, easy Christmas and New Year's where you aren't sending out energy to everywhere else that you haven't completely closed those loops? Where can you close those conversations? Where can you um, make sure that you're following up in a way that you haven't before? All righty. Hopefully this has been beneficial to you. I'm actually going to close this conversation up um, because I really want you to have these actionable steps. And then I'm going to give you one more little live today. Uh, but uh, it's more of a personal live, so we'll just tweak it and I'll see you guys on the next vid. If you got something out of this, please share it with someone that you know, um, other practitioners, and most of all, please take some action today because... There are so many fuzzy feelings out there to be had and there's so many more funds to be had um, and it's all just a matter of one conversation, one sentence in an email and you just never know where it could take you. All right, have an amazing day, people, and uh, I will catch you in the next vid. Bye.